Hey, NSC podcast number three, man. Doing it during the pandemic. <laughs> I feel like there's a, there's a lot of time and, and we haven't got a chance to, to get together and do a podcast, but people been asking, we want to deliver. So really guys, what have you guys been doing during this whole time? We'll start with you, Gabe. Well, I mean, I've been doing a lot of weight training. I've been doing a lot of outdoor. It's just kind of every day, every day, man. So you've just been training during, the, you've been taking this time during the pandemic to get your mind and body right. Yeah, I mean, everybody else is just, they're either inside or not doing anything at all. So you might as well take the time that you got and just use it. We definitely got plenty of time. I wish I had that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't been training? You haven't been just, just using this whole time to train then? Unfortunately huh, not. I mean, we've been skating outside on the trail, just a couple of us, just to stay in shape at least and at least feel good about ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, it's just been, just been work and trying to uh, get through the daily activities with the pandemic and just making sure, you know, especially all the new wheels that we got in and then all the new products. We want to just make sure that we're delivering on that. And then other than that, man, no, I'm getting fat. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the, the challenge, right, is that, you know, we want to skate. Everybody wants to skate. And you want to go skate with 50 people, but you don't want to skate with 50 people because then you're nervous about endangering others and, and not being courteous. And so, um, you know, really luckily, Brandon and I work together. And, of course, we're you know the four of us around each other a lot so this is a little bit different um but so we've been going in really small groups right and that's mm -hmm. and it's not as fun when you got 50 people versus when you got three people it's just yeah. not the same yeah so. the worst thing i think the worst thing about that if we have a, a massive group if we're on a trail you see 50 speed skaters in a pack <laughs> and then you got some lady in her car filming us and then it's all <laughs> over the internet and now we're those guys yeah so yeah, that's that's true yeah i think it's that it's that double-edged sword right like you said i mean you guys helped me move. We've we've seen each other plenty, so I don't think that is a, a, a huge deal, but it, it can be, right, in, in terms of getting big groups together. Teams are not practicing indoor skating right now. Skating Thomas, rinks are closed. In a closed right now. We, we are skating literally, rink. Yeah, we are literally yeah. right now, as we speak, in a closed skating rink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I mean, how does that make you guys feel? I mean, it's kind of scary a little bit, I guess, in, in terms of not just our sport, but just the rink industry in general. Yeah, uh, for me, it makes me sad, right? And, and my perspective is a lot different than the everyday skater, right? You know, someone like Gabe, he just misses the sport in itself. Yeah. I'm looking at it from the 5,000 foot level, which is our entire sport is based off of the success of skating rinks. And we're now in an environment where people can't go in skating rinks. So what does that mean for the future? What does that mean for these business owners? What does that mean for our sport? I, I don't know the answers. I'm just hoping that when we come out of this, that, that people are conscious and really go and support their local rinks, that when we do feel like we can go back into a normal environment and be safe, like go to session a few times. You know, For I know real. a lot of us mm -hmm. probably don't go to session. We speed skate a lot, but go support your rinks. Go, go bring your kids to the rinks, go skate, go do the things to make sure that we got a sport tomorrow. Yeah, so. and I, I think it's cool too, though, like just on social media, we see all the people you know in our sport that are still working out yeah, still training, working yeah. together and they're doing plyometrics on zoom i'm like that's pretty cool to see but a lot of the people that are out of the sport now are like man i miss skating too like i want to come back and it's really i think it's a good time to really try to push those people so when we do open up practice again now we have you know more participants yeah man hopefully we get to see a bunch of people coming back to the rinks that maybe hadn't been there before yeah now talk a little bit more with you, Gabe. Mm -hmm. Coming off a huge NSC, I mean, it's really your second at, what yeah. was it? It was your second NSC, your second right? NSC, second NSC yeah. ever, right? So we go into this thing, and you're you're feeling confident because you've been training really hard. Mm -hmm. But not only do you pull off your first ever win, but you almost get yourself a black suit, man. Almost, man. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost, man. Here's the thing: almost isn't good enough. Let's be real. Right. Almost isn't good enough. But training that hard coming up to the event, because I was I was training for months before the event. I, I didn't stop training like the year before. I got back from Worlds and I was training that whole time. I didn't stop training at all. I was doing squats and stuff like that up until the event. And then I get there, I'm confident. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do okay. I end up with like three seconds and one first. And I'm, <laughs> I'm really okay with that. I made it to my first grand champion race and I had a lot of fun. And it was an amazing event. Man, flashing back to that race, you know, Brandon and I are on this deal, and it was kind of down the wire, and it's you and Adrian, and we were like, dude, go for it. Throw 
for it, man. Go just, it. just go for it. I was your boy, man. But go, but just go I for know. it. Mm -hmm. I know. We were hyped, dude. I just remember it. I just watched him. Like, dude, he could do it now. He could do it now. And then I was like, ah, oh, dude. Next time, I get it. I right. skate with Adrian enough to know that if you make the mistake of running up on him, he comes out of that corner faster than anyone I've ever skated against. And it's weird. It doesn't look like, like it. it doesn't, yeah, no. That's the problem. Never looks it like never it. looks like it. And you pull up next to him and the pass is done. And then he has like a second gear that's like... And just slams you. Yeah. Whereas yeah. in the previous race where you got ahead, you mm -hmm. enter better than he does. So... The race was different when you were able to race yeah. it from the front versus trying to pass that. That kid's hard to pass. He, he is. He's big, too. Mm -hmm. He is bigger he is than he looks. <laughs> he it's is. Weird. I'm just small. <laughs> well, it's like, cause, you know, for us, right, we remember when he's little Adrian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. And then we Harry remember Potter. when he was like, <laughs> then, then, he, then he started, you know, getting a little taller, and then he was skinny Adrian. Yeah. yeah. Right, and all of a sudden he's kind of thickened up a little bit, and I was like, dude, this guy's he's, a brick. He's a yeah. man, dude. Yeah, he's, he's a brick, a man. man. Buddy. It's been cool to see that maturation process. It's I was actually telling Brandon this earlier today. Um, we were, were doing a little bit of skating here and just watching Gabe's maturation process. You know, mm -hmm. I remember watching him when he first came onto the scene. Crazy ass J.O. kid that was just <laughs> oh, yeah. just yeah. bombing everybody, dude. He did not care at all. I remember my my first uh, uh, memory of Gabe is I think I was with you, Miguel. We went to Jeremy's practice uh, and we're Jeremy just geez. like super oh, tight circles. turns in the cir in the middle and. Me and Miguel were like, you know, we were still in shape, and then we started skating, and then this kid, dude, who's just <laughs> behind us, just turning, dude, he's like super sharp. I was like, this kid's going to be good. Yeah, this man, and, and, and it was, was neat, too. He was in that group of a really competitive elementary boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like the group, right? That's like squad. It, it's like, that's yeah, kind of like the, the, where you, it's almost like the recruiting grounds for NSC. It's like, you see this elementary boys group. Who's, who's the top dogs in that group? Mm -hmm. And maybe not even the best person, but like, Who's the one that you see is like the scrappy guy, always yeah. in the mix? And I always remember seeing Gail, like, this, this, this dude, man. Yeah. This new cat, right? And then a couple of years later, man, he's, shoot, winning NSC races, man. Yeah, I wish that uh, that, that talent at those age ranges like stay throughout, be right? And then what's tough is that like a lot of these kids get pulled away from another passion, or another sport, or whatever. But, you know, I kind of think back over the last like 10 years and you're like, dude, like if everyone skated, that oh, was man, good. It's so just, cool. you know, but uh, no, it's uh, what it is. No, it is. And, and, and I think what's really neat is, and, and Brandon and I talked about this a lot on the last NSC, just seeing that generational shift. Yeah. You know, some of these great skaters that we all know of, you know, the Michael Cheeks, you know, mm -hmm. Justin Stellies, <clears throat> right? That it seemed like just a couple days ago, right? These guys were all skating in NSC and now these guys have you know moved on to other things you know, was, you know for example still he's really moved towards IAs and you know, a lot of other guys just doing other stuff yeah right just graduated in life and seeing these younger guys like gay like I said that was J.O. Mm -hmm. style three or four years ago and now, now he's winning. yeah now he's winning winning the big show yeah man yeah. I, I think that tells you a lot about what a little hard work can do for you it's funny though because if you skated as as long as I have which is obnoxiously long time <clears throat> you kind of get used to going, all right, that kid's fast at 14. And if you skated as long as me, you know by 16, like, the kid can race you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so yeah. it's been so cool to see some of these generations as you're like, like I think we have pictures of, of uh, like Adrian and Ian and some of them at like the exhibition like races there at NSC. Yeah. When I say exhibition races, I mean, there was literally one here at Patterson's <laughs> where we let people grab rentals and skate. That was, and I, I, dude, th those were <laughs> pretty skate. fun to yeah. watch. Yeah, so it, it's really crazy to see a picture of that and go, that kid's the grand champion. And then, you know, what Brandon's talking about with him going, we showed up to practice and Jeremy's like, I got this kid, he's, he's getting good. And then you're like, damn, I can't even race a kid anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no, I mean, you, you spoke of Ian and, and Miguel's referring to Ian Workman, that's the, the younger brother of Adrian Workman. That oh, God, young man is now in the NSC. Like, that's how. This generational shift has really become like these these young kids that were I sw primary, it seemed like just five seconds ago, right? Now we're in the NSC. And, and he's another guy I know Gabe was mentioning earlier, like he's mm -hmm. you know, he's been doing a little bit of stuff with him. He's making sure he's training and, oh, and, and getting right. right. This will be kind of off topic, but uh, Ron's behind the camera here. Can you um, show la the last three laps in this podcast for uh, Ian making it? Yeah, well, that's Which, a candy. if you're going to make it, like, 
that's the stomping grounds, right? Wesley's always been uh, such a great benchmark uh, because throughout the years, like he, you know, Wesley consistent, keeps yeah, very yeah. consistent, and and you know if you can race Wesley, that you got the goods to, to yeah. go to NSC. So to see him and Ian go heads up, that was, that was awesome. so mm -hmm. it, was, it was really cool, man. It was almost like watching graduation right happen right in front right. of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. I, and I don't mean to say graduate. I feel bad the 2020 seniors, right? <laughs> all across America, they don't yeah. get their yeah. graduation party. So I, it's a sore subject, I'm sure, for a lot. And you know, for any of you seniors out there watching, yeah. man, we, we definitely uh, are excited about you graduating just because you didn't get to celebrate it necessarily. Yep, made hey, it. We're still thinking about you guys. You, you still made it, man. You still yep. made it. Yeah, I think, um, you know, for NSC, as we're looking forward and just trying to <clears throat> figure out what this looks like for us as a business as well, um, you know, allowing things to kind of shake out here and figure out like what's our next event, right? Because typically, you know, we would be at indoor nationals, indoor yeah. nationals where we are, we're piggybacking and, and running our pro night before amateurs. We we don't even know if if that can happen right now, right? So we're all kind of on standby. We're missing skating. Um, one thing I do find odd is that people are still buying wheels. I don't oh, know where they're skating. I think a lot of wheels. Yeah. Well, I think, and I think people are. I think people are just very optimistic. You yeah. know that that we're going to get this thing figured out. We're going to figure out how to do it. And I think that's more than anything. I know there's right now. There's always that weird divide that you got to be against something if you're for something. And I, mm -hmm. and I don't really necessarily see that being the case right here. I, I would really, you know, challenge everyone to to figure out not if we can do it, but how, how? we yeah. can do it. And it was pretty cool too. Like like the wheel thing when we announced it it was almost like we had such a long drought of it and now you just opened up the candy store to <laughs> skaters like no one you know it was yeah. tough to get wheels and then now we have you know a surplus of them and it was just like well we need more <laughs> sure yeah right because you know we've been really trying to deliver on that promise of like okay guys we know there is mm -hmm. a shortage we ordered a large quantity that large quantity is almost gone which is insane because we thought we over order oh, and we yeah. we really misjudged that so now we've already placed another order to double the large quantity that we ordered and so we're the goal is really just to get ourselves in a position where we're never backlogged mm -hmm. on wheels and that's a that's a challenge of just trying to guess really that right because you don't want wheels to sit on the shelf forever because they're the wheel actually yeah it affects the wheel it, yeah. it impacts mm -hmm. the wheel right so you want this balance of like okay we want some fresh wheels i mean they can sit for a while but you don't want to sit on the shelf right. for a year just yeah isn't going to skate the same so but yeah well speaking of that i mean you're skating the wheel right now mm -hmm. you skated the wheel at nsc I, are, are you a believer <sighs> for sure the wheel dude you can pound laps you are not going to bark <laughs> you can, yeah, pound, yeah, yeah, you can pound laps and you are not going to bark you can take corners sharp and you are not going to bark these wheels can withstand almost anything like i've pounded these wheels so much and they're still pretty good i still i'm these Try are the them ones outdoor, dude while you're at yeah <laughs> i feel like he's giving me false hope like i'm gonna put these wheels on and be able to race people dude I, he had me sold hey right. here's the thing these are the same wheels i've worn since nsc and i'm still able to run like i'm pretty sure if we put me on the track right now eight second laps let's do it prove it right now prove it for everybody right yeah. now that's awesome no man i that's think cool. that's that's awesome though gabe it, and, and it sounds like from your end gabe i mean you're training, you're doing everything like, hey, we're going to go skate. You know, we're we're going to mm -hmm. have a world championships. We're going to figure out how to do the selection process. And is that, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but no. is that kind of your mentality through all this? The, the mentality I'm keeping through this is like, I'm keeping training just because I'm keeping hope for a selection. I'm keeping hope for worlds. I'm keeping hope for everything that's going to be coming up. Even if it doesn't happen this yeah, year, so it's for sure yeah. going to happen in the future. Right. And if you don't take the time that you have right now to use the tools that you have, you're not going to be able to succeed in the future. So. Sure. No, you're getting prepped, man. That's, I'm, I'm inspired. Man. I know. You got me all fired up. Train. <laughs> start training and stuff. I don't yeah. know where, but I'm going to figure it out, man. I get some bands going or something, man. <laughs> no, I think that's a, I think that's pretty, a pretty just good testament to how everyone should be looking at yeah, this thing. Yeah, for sure. You know, let's, let's keep doing the things that, that we can that to, to keep it as, as normal as what, we normally think normal is, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And and I think you're right. I mean, you're training like 
you're going to Worlds. Exactly. And I think that's awesome. Hey, you, if, you, if you stay ready, man, you never got to get ready, right? Exactly. Well, I, I promise you if there is a selection, he's going to Worlds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure, Because I've seen the way that he for trains. For sure. So. I'm not betting against that. <laughs> no, no. I know. He's, he's, he's the guy, man. He's definitely doing his part, man. Well, I mean, from, from your guys' perspective, you know, just kind of going off topic from skating a little bit, but just how has this influenced you guys? You guys work together, mm. yeah. right? How has this really influenced – you guys in terms of working and trying to find that balance on what you can and can't do? Well, I mean, luckily, like, the way that our offices are set up, there's, there's not really many people in there. Um, so really, to me, like, life hasn't really changed as much as far as, like, going to work and doing my routines. I mean, others in going out with buddies, going, you know, sure. us getting a beer or going to a restaurant or something. But other than that, like, kind of like how Gabe was putting it, like, you still got to keep doing the activities, you still got to keep putting in the work and – you know, you can't just put your head in the sand while, you know, we have a pandemic. I sure. mean, it is, you know, scary, but, I mean, life goes on. And you just got to keep, you know, keep pushing. Got to prepare, yeah, man. Yeah, got to prepare. I know it, it was really weird for me because I, I changed jobs. Yeah. You're right in the middle, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, it, mm -hmm. guys, I, I just got a job working at the University of Washington football, and it happened like two days before kind of the time of the statewide shutdown. So it was Definitely a transition. You know, you're, yep. you're learning completely new stuff, but you can't go and ask someone at their office. So <laughs> exactly. I know uh, everybody in in probably the country right now knows what Zoom is. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I think everyone's had at least ten Zoom meetings a day we need more. for the last month. <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe, maybe that's what we'll do for our next podcast. Right? We'll get on Zoom. Yeah. And, and see if we can go track some more people down that we can't physically get to mm -hmm. uh, right now. But yeah, I think that's that's the name of the game right now is we got to adapt. And I know one thing we're doing with NSC is, is truly doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? Prepa like, like we said, preparing like we're going to have indoor nationals, like we're going to have NSC, like we're going to have the world championships. Yeah, it was, was so weird for, for me too because, um, you know, we left for our company's president's club in February. And, you know, this is nationwide, like all of our best friends are all together and celebrating our successes from the previous year. And we're seeing all these reports, but like it's it's not where we're at, right? And so you like you're hearing about it, and you're like, God, I mean, it sounds like home is crazy right now. But we're literally in a pool next to each other, <laughs> going, yeah. huh? And then we get home, and it's like Armageddon. You're like, sure. what is happening? There's fear. There's anxiety. There's no toilet paper. There's no yeah. toilet paper. <laughs> heads, heads are falling off, yeah, yeah. right? And and so uh, that emotional roller coaster is tough for us because we're also in an industry that's really tied to uh, the economic impact for everybody, right? So like, it's not just the stress that I'm dealing with on my own personal level, whether that's NSC as a business or, or me as a loan officer, I'm also dealing with the stress of all these families who are in the middle of either trying to save money on a refinance or they want to purchase a house, but now there's just so much uncertainty. Sure. And so, you know, really the thing that got my head straight was, okay, I got to get back to my routine and I have to focus on the things that I can control. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where you get lost is when you're trying to control something you can. I, I know that I can wake up in the morning, do my little small workout routine. You know, I, I go in the office, kind of isolate myself, obviously, because we have to do all of our safety practices while, while we are allowed to work. And so once I got back to the routine, then I started getting some of that mental health back. And that's something that I don't think we're really talking enough about sure. during this is just making sure that people are mm -hmm. staying mentally. Because it's so healthy. easy just to get thrown off and, you know, you're just <clears> like, Dude, like I can't take you. You know, you're sitting in your house all day, and it's just like you're messing up your normal routine. And you can just, I, I yeah. felt it like a day. I'm just like, dude, I'm gonna go crazy. <laughs> <outside."> <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about it. So, I mean, you you guys can all attest to this. You know, Gabe can. He he's not old enough to work like that. Right? <laughs> yeah. The rest of us grown no. folks, but he can just work out, baby. He can just I work, work out, work out yeah. man. <laughs> but you know, you you have a a long Tuesday. You know, maybe you had to deliver some people not the best news, and you got a lot weighing on your mind. And you show up to practice at eight o'clock and you're breathing so damn hard you can't think about anything except mm. skating, right? Sure. Like and, and that is almost therapeutic, at it least is, it is for me for very sure, much so. Yeah. And I don't have that right now, right? And so that's that's tough, right? Tuesdays and Thursdays, they clear my mind. Those are the days I skate. We skate late at night. I know when I know people probably aren't gonna call me at eight o'clock and so uh, losing that's not fun. I know, man. I, I, I moved back and to the Seattle area, and I was all excited about getting to skate indoor again with you guys. And then, nope, nope. <laughs> shut down. 
Yeah. First world problems, though, right? Because obviously yeah. it could could be a lot worse. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of yeah. situations. You know, I know there's worse. you know definitely families in the skating community that have been affected by this, mm -hmm. right? Sure. And it's it's definitely not something to uh, to bat an eye on. You know, mm -hmm. I know there's no perfect solution for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think at the end of the day, hopefully everybody's staying safe and um, that we can all learn how to adjust yeah. and, and again not look at it as a, a all or nothing thing. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and I think that's probably the biggest thing we can all take away from men's. How can we do things? You know, so well, but I can tell you on our end that when we're through this, we are going to be looking forward to putting on another amazing show and and uh, really getting you know the skaters excited again and and you know making sure that we're there to promote our sport and stand behind it and do our part to keep contributing. You know, and so we're on standby. We're we're you know waiting on pins and needles, ready to. Yeah, ready, ready to rock, roll. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. One, one thing I definitely want to talk about before we get off, i got to tell everybody about this golden ticket thing. So there, there's, there's like, you know, right now we've got the Bigfoot wheels ready to go, yeah. ready, ready to ship, but there's a golden ticket. What, what, what is this Dude, golden ticket? What, think about it. Willy Wonka. Okay. You, you take, take a piece of a... Uh, take a piece of a piece of chocolate, <laughs> and then you have a piece of golden ticket in your mouth. You go redeem it, and you get another bar. It's the same thing with our wheels. I love that. I love that Brandon eats the wrap. Yeah, 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 for sure. How do you know? <laughs> Dude, the, the, take the a bite out of the wrapping paper. He takes a bite, and there's a piece of golden, golden tick in his mouth. But no, he did the same thing for the wheels. Is it one of uh, every 15 seconds? Oh, yeah, sets. but the, you know, the, again, like everything we've done with the NSC from day one has uh, really been wrapped around this idea of being fair, right? Like there was so much drama around the idea that we did a wheel restriction. For us, that was to be fair. Yeah. It's just about yeah. being Level fair, right? And so as we think about how to do this and how to do this fairly, what our game plan is, um, our wheels are on a pallet right now. We're waiting for them to be delivered, we think, Monday, and we're going to turn right back around and get them out to everybody. But the goal is uh, for us to uh, package all these, seal them. They go in these amazing uh, Bigfoot wheel tubes, um, and then we have seals on there so that you know that the package is tampered with, right? Like if you get a tube and there isn't seals, someone broke your tube, okay? Trying to get your ticket. But, yeah. the, but the goal is, right, is to uh, put one in every 15 sets, and then we're going to mix them up so we have no clue what the mm -hmm. 15 are, right? And then, um, then, of course, we sell to our uh, retail partners, and we also sell direct. And so um, with this, it's just important that uh, we're blind on it. And then there's instructions on that golden ticket to redeem it. We're going to take it a step farther. We didn't expect this to happen. So no one has a, a set of Bigfoot wheels in their hand yet. I know that because I would personally ship them, and we don't have the actual shipment yet. And I've had well, you'd over have them on your skates too. Well, <laughs> yeah, but not we, the printed ones, we all right? Would. Yeah. But listen to this. I've had over 15 people contact me already, telling me they won the golden ticket. <laughs> There's no golden tickets. There's no gold. Yeah. There's there's so, no golden tickets to redeem. Guys. There's no golden tickets to redeem. So so because of this, we're, what we're gonna do is uh, we're actually gonna have you uh, send us the golden ticket. So you have to still do the instructions, and then when you send us the golden ticket, you'll be able to redeem it because mm -hmm. it's the only way we can ensure that someone isn't handing their friend the golden ticket and cheating the yeah. the process. Um, then the other big thing um, to note is that the golden tickets only work in full sets of hundreds and full sets of one tens. So uh, we're not preventing people from buying uh, single wheels. You can buy single wheels all day, but our packaging's designed for full sets, right? And again, we have to protect the integrity of the golden ticket, so we have to hide it in there and seal it. So if someone orders six 110s and two 100s, we, we don't want to know where the golden tickets are. So we're not gonna pack those and put a golden ticket. We're gonna break those up and then sell individually. So that's an important part to know mm -hmm. about. It. But you could easily just buy more wheels. You're gonna need them <laughs> exactly. eventually anyway. I like that. You buy process. a whole yeah, set of hundreds, buy a whole set of one tens. Yeah. You'll use them anyway. So right. Well, that's cool. No, I think that's a that's a really good way to give back. I think that's really cool. One thing I love about NSC is is I just tr we truly care about like the customers. Like I mm -hmm. just without without the customers, there is no sport. There's no. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's the the one thing that we remain very cognizant of when we make decisions like this. So. Mm -hmm. Get get your sets up. Get your chances up, man. It's like the lotto. You can't yeah, know. can't win if you don't play. Way yeah. better off. You want that golden ticket? You better go get you a set. And I, the only good thing though is like when you buy a lotto ticket, you don't get anything. You don't get <laughs> <Yeah>. anything, <laughs> right? At least when you buy a set yeah, of you wheels. wheels, you don't get the golden yeah. tickets. Okay, get your wheels. Yeah, yeah. the mm -hmm. golden ticket's just a flat out extra, right? Yeah, That's, yeah I that think is. The exactly. coolest part about it is like 
you already got the prize, which has been impossible to get wheels, right? <laughs> so you already got the prize, but then the, the golden ticket's going to be. And then um, also we got, you know, a really cool uh, sticker, uh, the Bigfoot sticker, which you can put on your phones, your oh, laptops. Man, yep. It's it's uh, The packaging was really important for us, too. So Yeah, man, I got to give them the extras, man. Mm-hmm. You know, you buy a set of wheels, you got to get more than just the wheels. So. Well, no, man, well, this has been awesome. I think, uh, you know, we really are, are, are hoping everyone is staying safe at, at their particular places right now. Uh, we hope that, you know, families that have been affected by this are, are doing well and that hopefully people are recovering if they have uh, contracted COVID-19. Mm-hmm. And, and we also really hope that we can figure out how we can get all back. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think that's, that is the one really important thing is let's not argue about when or why. Let's just yeah. try to figure out how. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's going to go a lot longer in the long run. For sure. All right. Awesome. Well, okay, well, guys, we'll catch you guys later. NSC Podcast 3. Yep. Go dogs. Go dogs. <laughs> <laughs>